Hello, beautiful subscribers. It's April 13th here, Southeastern Pennsylvania, Zone 7A. And today we're gonna to be looking at blooms from 12 different apple varieties. So I can help you backyard orchard growers decide which apples are best pollinating partners for you. I'm gonna show you how far along each one is. The Fiji is gonna be one of the later to bloom. The Arkansas Black is probably gonna be last to bloom, regardless of what the internet says. Honeycrisp, middle of the pack. Macintosh, first one to bloom. Furthest along out of my 12 varieties. Gala, middle of the pack. Pink Lady, one of my first to bloom. King blooms are already out. Golden Delicious, middle of the pack. Granny Smith, middle of the pack. Another Gala. Gold Rush, my favorite apple, is early. Crimson Crisp. On the earlier side. Red Delicious, towards the back, middle to the back of the pack. And Wine Sap, definitely on the later end. So, earliest, Pink Lady, Gold Rush, and Macintosh. Latest, Arkansas Black, Wine set, Fiji. There are five different flowering groups for apples. One, two, three, four, five. It's pretty simple. You can find charts online. One being the earliest to bloom and five being the latest to bloom. We do not want to buy apples that are more than two groups away from each other because you run the risk of not getting cross-pollination. So, if you buy an apple in group one, don't buy an apple in group four or five because their blooms are most likely not going to overlap. Okay, so this is the Macintosh. It's in flowering group two. And you can see that it is pretty far along. So, if you have a Macintosh and you are looking to buy a Red Delicious in flowering group four, you are probably not going to get cross-pollination. So let's go look at the Red Delicious. We can see how far along the Macintosh is. Let's go look at the Red Delicious. All right, here's the Red Delicious and there's not a single flower open. And this is in group four. And the Macintosh is in group two. And maybe you'll get a little overlap, but I doubt it. So this is an important time to be spending with your trees. People always ask me, or they always say, I didn't get any apples this year. I didn't get any, how come I didn't get any apples? Well, the first question would be, well, do you have any flowers? Did it bloom? You're only gonna know that if you're out there spending time with your trees, because if you didn't get any flowers, then you're not getting any apples. And if you did get flowers, 
and you still didn't get any apples, then did another tree bloom at the same time? So, if you have one apple tree, let's say the Crimson Crisp, you are probably not gonna get any fruit. Apples need cross-pollination from another variety. Yes, there are some varieties that claim to be self-partial pollinating, but don't believe it and you're not gonna get a big crop. So, if you have one Crimson Crisp at home, you're probably not gonna get any fruit because it is sterile to its own pollen. It cannot reproduce via its own pollen. We need to get pollen from another apple variety. Here's the Crimson Crisp and you can see that it is just about to bloom. The buds are swollen call this red tip and they are gonna open today or tomorrow this whole week so if the crimson crisp flowers are open but no other apple varieties flowers are open at the same time and you don't have pollinators transferring the pollen say from the Red Delicious or the Gala, you are not getting any apples on the Crimson Crisp. Some apples claim to be partially self-pollinating like this Gala here. But from my experience, we're talking about the difference between 10 or 20 pieces of fruit and 200 pieces of fruit if it gets crossed from a different tree so yes you can get fruit from some varieties Fiji I think is another one um, there's a handful that claim to be self pollinating but not a big crop I'm gonna show you how far along each tree is because you can't always believe the bloom chart unfortunately because Pink Lady is supposed to be in group four. And my Pink Lady flowers first every single year. You can see that all the King Blooms have opened up. The King Bloom is the strongest, most dominant bloom in each cluster. My three trees that are furthest along are the Pink Lady, the Macintosh and down at the other end is the Gold Rush that I'll show you. So those three would be good pollinating partners. The three that are the furthest behind is the Fiji, the Arkansas Black, and the Red Delicious. You could see the Fiji barely breaking bud and the Arkansas black is still a real tight clustered so don't expect to get cross pollination if you have a Macintosh pink lady in gold rush with a Fiji Arkansas black a red delicious all right, so here's the Macintosh. The king blooms are all open. But right next to it is the Honeycrisp. No flowers open at all. And on the other side's the Gala. No flowers open at all. So, there is a pretty good chance that none of these king blooms are going to get pollinated. Yeah, I have a pink lady over there and I have a gold rush down there and they have some king blooms open. But 
we need way, way more flowers than that. We also need a day where it's not crazy windy. You can hear it's crazy windy, cloudy, overcast, rainy. That's why I can continue to complain that it's the worst spring ever. There's no bees. I mean, there's bees down there, but they're not flying today. No pollinators. This thing should be covered in pollinator insects, but 30 mile per hour winds out here right now. So, like always, growing fruit is frustrating. The Macintosh is by far the earliest out of my 12 varieties. Let's look at a few other ones. Here's a Granny Smith. Most of my apples are in groups two, three, and four. So they do overlap. Granny Smith, Gala, Golden Delicious, Honeycrisp. They all look like they're going to bloom at the exact same time. Here's the Gala, very similar to the Granny Smith, but far behind the Macintosh and far behind the Pink Lady. Now the good thing is these trees really want to reproduce. And that's why they put out what's called a king bloom first. The king bloom is the more dominant bloom in the cluster. Usually there's four, five, or six flowers in each bloom cluster. Now one of them is more dominant and opens up sooner. That's called the king bloom. So you may have king blooms from a later variety, say group four or five, overlap with flowers, non-king blooms on earlier varieties. Now, if this king bloom gets pollinated, it will actually have a bigger, stronger apple. It will produce a better fruit than these other four around it. Here's Gold Rush, my favorite eating apple. It also stores extremely well. I highly recommend this tree, but it is flowering pretty early compared to my others. So, if you have a Gold Rush, make sure you get another tree in the early bloom group. There's no way this is gonna cross with the Fiji or the Red Delicious or a Wine Sap or an Arkansas Black. Here is a Wine Sap. You can still see it's very tight clustered. Another excellent pollinating partner is a crab apple. They're in the same genus as an apple tree, genus Malus, and it will cross pollinate with the apple tree. It's an excellent pollinating partner because it has extended bloom times. There's blooms on here that are about to open and there's blooms on here that aren't probably going to open for at least another week. So maybe this tree will have flowers on it for three weeks. It also has a significant amount of pollen per flower. So this was planted here, I think, by my grandmom. And it's about 100 yards away from my apple trees, which is a little bit far. But if you have a crab apple near you, it can also pollinate your apple trees. And you can see some of these flowers are about to open. All we need is the bees. 
here's another crab apple in the woods. It's about 100, 150 feet from my apple trees. So you probably have crab apples near your property and just don't know about it. If your apple tree is young, it will produce less flowers or no flowers at all. Here is a Fiji apple, and this is a standard. So it's not grafted on dwarf or semi-dwarf rootstock. So a standard apple tree only five years in the ground is considered young. You can see there are very little flower buds. Here's another good example. This is a honey crisp. Last year it probably only had 20 flowers on it total. And this year it probably has 100, 200 clusters five flowers in each so a huge jump in blooms from one year to the other so stay patient here's a golden delicious standard rootstock which means it's a full-size tree and it's now on the seventh season and this is the first year it's ever bloomed. Here is a pink lady, third season, blooming, bloomed last year, and that's because it's on dwarf rootstock. So there's pros and cons to being standard, full size, and dwarf rootstock, but if you want flowers fast, which most people do, because that means fruit fast, then get yourself dwarfing rootstock. There's a lot of conflicting information online when it comes to bloom times. That's why I wanted to show you guys my different varieties. So if you have one of them and you have a question for me, just shoot it down in the comment section and maybe I can try and tell you from my own experience which ones overlap. All right, so long story short, apple pollination, cross pollination is very important. Make sure you don't buy trees more than two bloom groups apart from each other. If you have any questions, hit me down in that comment section. Be coming back in about two weeks to show the trees full bloom with some bee activity. So hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.